And now, Mike's thoughts. In this world of the NFL Combine, word soup comes to play. The meeting word soup comes out many, many times. We want to try to dissect what people are saying. We want to dissect of what general managers are making think about what they're doing in the draft. Thinking about what scouts are looking at. Thinking about what quarterbacks are doing the said thing. It's all word soup at the end of the day. Meaning, they're saying a lot of something, but not saying nothing at all. For example, Ryan Poles, in his press conference just the other day, on Tuesday, he said, we will move quickly as possible, but we won't rush the process. Let me repeat that for you one more time. We will move quickly, but we will not rush the process. Guys, do not take anything general managers, coaches, uh, owners, whoever says at the NFL combine. You can try to read between the lines. You can try to cherry pick of what they're trying to say. But at the end of the day, they are trying to downplay everything that they are trying to do. They are trying to boost their guy up or actually they're they are trying to boost their potential draft pick that they don't want but they but they know other teams want they want to boost them up they can hey hey maybe this person might draft this guy at the end of the day guys do not take anything of what anybody says at the combine with any type of salt whatsoever a little bit of grain of salt that's it that is it that's it cue that intro are you ready for the best damn NFL show on the planet. Man Hour Nation, rise up. Yeah, yeah, hey, let's go. Hitting that gridiron, we going hard, we running the plays. You know the vibe, only the strong survive. Gotta keep your head in the game. Talking NFL, uncut, straight raw. Steady bringing that sauce. We about to take off, get it hype. This man, our sport talk. Yeah, yeah, from the quarterback to the lineman. Everybody bringing heat. You don't really want to try them. Hey, hey, who gonna Man hour. Man, hour. Sport talk. Sport talk. Man, hour. Sport talk. Sport talk. What team you repping? We keep it interesting. Who caught another down? Who got that interception? This is Man Hour. Man, Sport talk. Man, hour. Sport talk. What team you repping? We keep it interesting. Who caught another down? Who got that interception? Let's go. And good morning. Man Hour Nation. Michael Blackout, you're here with the Man Hour. Be sure to over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page or check out the blog section as well. And if you are not a member a Pigskin Pundit already, click the link below and become a Pigskin Pundit. You get a members only after show. You get some free merch. You get some extra perks that we're not going to say right now because they're always growing. The perks are always growing over there and we... Uh, we try to do after show at least three times a week over there. This week has been a little, been a little suspect because I've been on, the, been on the road, but it is what it is. But guys, this is a live, interactive show, so I encourage you to talk your stuff down in the comments, but be ready to defend yourself. For example, I just got on the comments here a little earlier, and this person, this is about the Brock Purdy having better stats than Patrick Mahomes clip. He says, you're stupid. He used the wrong your. So I've kindly said, hey, man, if you're going to talk your stuff, use the correct grammar. And because if I'm stupid, you're obviously stupid since you don't know how to use the correct grammar. But it is what it is. But guys, I do I do encourage you to talk your stuff. Jump down in there in the comments and have a grand old day. But with that being said, that being said, guys, let's welcome some people into the chat here. We got Wayne G in there popping up. We got we got Javi in there today. What's up, Javi? Long time no see. We got Combsy in there. We got my dad in there. Why are the comments not popping up? But it is, it is, it is, it is what it is. But guys, let's uh, let's let's talk about this weather last night. What is up with that weather last night here in southern southern Indiana? And there are like tornadoes and Jim. Uh, Jim Contour was what's going on? Jim Contour was in town and 
we were expecting the worst, and it didn't even rain at my house. Didn't even rain at my house last night. <laughs> what? 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 Ugh, whatever. It is, it is what it is at the end of the day. But, guys, we do got a great show for you lined up today. We are going to talk about the no skills, actually no shows, at the NFL Combine. We are going to talk about if that is hurting their stock, if it's up in their stock. like And, the, and, the, and then, of course, it is Wednesday. It is Factor Crap Wednesday, so we are going to talk about Ryan Poles. What is he talking all that facts or crafts about with the uh, uh, Chicago Bears? Kevin O'Connell says Kirk Cousins wants to stay in Minnesota. But does Kirk Cousins want to stay in Minnesota? Factor, a little bit of factor crap there. And then the Chargers. Should they just go ahead and move on from Justin Herbert? Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert. All right. It looks like my, I finally got my chat fixed up. There we go. We got John Peebles in the chat. What is up, John? What's up? What's up? What's up? But, guys, let's... Let's 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 jump into this title segment of the show here. Let's jump into this first segment of the show that I am I am very very much intrigued about. Very much intrigued intrigued about because there are players out there that are going to be quote a no show, a no showing of skills at the NFL Combine. Some big quarterback names uh, are Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels. They will not be participating in the combine. They will not be throwing and all that stuff. Uh, and then you have wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Napers, and then running back from Texas, Jonathan Brooks, and Iowa cornerback Cooper Dijean. So these are some of the no notable players that will not be participating in this year's NFL combine. So I got to start thinking about this. I got to... Thinking like, man, when these players do not show their skills off at the combine, does it hurt their stock? Does it show them that they are not prepared to put it on the line any given time of the day? Does it hurt their stock that, you know, like, hey, They've had three months to prepare for this situation, and maybe they're just not quite ready yet. But the combine, guys, I feel is geared toward for about players that are trying to jump up into the first first round. Players that are like in like the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round draft pick area, mock draft pick area, and they're trying to boost their stock. So Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, it does not hurt their stock by any stretch of the uh, imagination that they're not going to throw at the NFL Combine. It does not hurt their stock that, you know, they're not going to run the 40-yard dash or do the bench or do the bench press, whatever, right? Marvin Harrison Jr., really not going to hurt him to throw to catch some pat passes. It, it, these guys, guys, it does not hurt their stock at all. The only thing it does is I think it, solidifies like hey trust the tape trust the tape you have tape out there two three years on me trust the tape trust your gut really if anything it can just hurt their draft stock if they have a bad outing at the combine if they have a bad outing at the combine it can more or less hurt their stock drake may or Let's get to what well, Drake May is potentially going to be a second overall pick. Might jump up in that first round pick, depending what the Bears do, right? What if he misses six out of 12 throws? What if he runs a 4 8 40? What if he only can bench 225 10 times, right? That's going to lower his stock a little bit. Drake May can't really go up higher in the like in the draft. Caleb Williams can't really go higher in the draft. Jalen Daniels could go higher, but probably won't. Guys, these are the top performing players in the draft. And the the only thing it can do is hurt their stock in the end. Um, so let's go ahead and jump over in, into the chat here. Got some people popping in. I saw at the corner of, of my eye. Let me adjust my chat so I can see it. Bada bing, bada boom. Wayne G says the top guys can't get better. There's cannot better their stock at the combine. 
So there's nothing but downside. So why do it? It, it? Yes. So obviously there's pros and cons to everything, right? Pro the the pros are if what if Jalen Daniels has a crazy combine, blows people out of the water, runs that four four forty that people are talking talking about, throws dots, right? Could could he really move up in the draft? Probably not. I think you're right, Rain Rain Lingy. I think you're right. Carson Lang's in the chat. He says the first round guys can only hurt their stock. Correct. Well, not not first round guys in general, but guys that are in the top two of their positions, right? So Caleb Williams, Drake May, pretty pretty much one two quarterback. I think it's pretty much a an agreement across the board, right? Marvin Harrison Jr., the best wide receiver prospect out there. Jonathan Brooks, their running back from Texas, probably the best prospect out there for running back wise. So yeah, it, it, it definitely hurt those hurt those guys off. Um, it's and then John says it's for ratings, Rangy. It's for ratings. John says these guys need to perform because the NFL wants the rank wants the ratings. <laughs> what? I'm not, I'm not for sure if it's if it's about the ratings or not. To be honest, John. Because I think the enthusiasts are going to tune into the combine anyways. I plan on being at the combine personally uh, uh, tomorrow and Friday for for sure. Uh, but just, I don't know. But then I got to thinking, if it can't hurt your stock, right? Can't really make your stock better. But does it just show that you're just not ready? Could it potentially show that Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Kayla Williams isn't ready for the combine, right? Now, all the probably all of these quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, cornerbacks in general will perform at a pro day at said school, right? We will see Kayla Williams throw out a uh, USC pro day within the next couple weeks, right? We will see Drake may throw at the uh, North Carolina pro day in a few weeks. We're going to see these people throw just will not be at the combine. So I understand Wayne G's and Carson's comments over here saying that these players can only hurt their stock. If you're not throwing at the combine, why are you going to throw at a pro day? That's, that's the question that has to be asked. If you're not going to throw at the combine, why go to your home 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 stadium with your receivers and a pair of shorts with a nice scripted 50 play, you know, throw route that you've been working on for 3 months? Why throw then? Because at a pro day, you are expected to be perfect. At a NFL pro day, you are expected to hit every freaking throw know every answer know every read because you've been doing a 50 a 40 to 50 play script every day for the last two and a half months with your trainers and with your guys i think the pro day has more of a downside than the combine because yes the combine does have scripted plays right you you know you're gonna go thrown from hash to the sideline on a five yard out 10 yard out slants whatever right but they're not your guys. I get it. I think the rest of the players know that, or the rest of the scouts and GMs know that as well. But at a pro day, you are expected to be perfect. So we're talking about hurting of stock. I think the pro days hurt your stock worse than the combine. If you have a bad pro day, that hurts your stock more. I, I, I do believe. Guys, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Does having a pro day and a bad pro day hurts you your stock more than a combine. Um, but up, but dum, but dum. Wayne G says the running backs need all need to participate. Best one is in the third round right now. So a good 40 gets them into round two. Wayne G, it would not surprise me if Jonathan Brooks goes in the first round this year, to be totally honest. Jonathan Brooks, the running back from Texas, he reminds me of. Gibbs and uh, B. John Robinson from last year, right? He has a very, very good motor, and I, I think him sitting out is perfectly just fine. 
Wayne G says also throwing out a pro, pro pro day to your own receivers rather than guys you have timing with. So Wayne, let me ask you this question. Let's say Caleb Williams has his pro day. He is sitting there at mighty USC and, Sunny Southern California, right? Beautiful day. Let's say it's 70 degrees. The birds are chirping. There's a slight west to east wind, about two miles an hour. Just a perfect day. Not too hot, not too cold. You get a little bit of sweat rolling. And Caleb Williams has one of the worst pro days ever. Yes, he might complete 40 or 45 passes. But he just doesn't look crisp. The ball doesn't look good coming out of his hand. He seems flustered. He just doesn't look good. Do you think that would hurt his stock? Do you think that would hurt his stock seeing him struggle on a pro day when you are with your own receivers, your own coaching staff, your own environment, in your own pair of shorts? I think that has the potential of hurting your stock more worse than a bad combine. A bad pro day can hurt your stock, but no top prospect has ever had a bad pro day. It's guaranteed to be good. Exactly. That that is just that is just just my point. We expect them to be a perfect pro day. Nobody has ever struggled on a pro day. Even Matt Leinart and Vince Young all had perfect pro days. Ryan Leaf, perfect pro day. But what if you don't? What if you let me ask this, let me ask this question real quick. If you have a bad pro day and you are Caleb Williams, and you fall out of that first round pick, that first overall pick, you drop to second. Drop to third, drop to fourth, drop to fifth. Nobody's still picking your name. How far does he fall until he starts to panic? I'd say 10 or 10 or like 11. Vikings are drafting at like 10. If they let Caleb Williams fall that that far, it is, it is what it is. It is what it is. But combines are kind of overrated. I mean, obviously, the enthusiast is going to love it. Um, being there in person is amazing. You actually get to see the guys' true true colors. You 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 get to interact with the guys and see how they act from breakfast to lunch to dinner with cameras in their face all day, with media in their face all day. So that brings us to our first factor crap of the of of the day. The first factor crap of the day is personality. Personality. Scouts, scouts, coaches, and GMs are going to be following players from sunup to sundown, sometime even past sundown, from eating breakfast to working their way around the cameras. So let me ask you guys this question. Fact or crap, when drafting in the NFL, does personality matter? When you are drafting in the NFL, does your personality matter as far as where you go in the draft pick? So I am a manager at my particular job, and I get an opportunity to interview a lot of people. I see their skill sets. I see their what they've done, their resumes, whatever, right? But at the end of the day, I really don't care what your skill set is. If you didn't have skill set, you probably wouldn't be applying for this job. I want to see how you fit into my culture. I want to see how you fit into my team. Are you going to be the black sheep? Are you going to be a ringleader that just brings everybody down day after day after day? Or are you going to be a person that comes with a smile and on their face and lifts everybody up? But this is not Ford. This is not information technology field. This is not a nine to five, whatever job, right? This is the NFL. Your lifespan in the NFL is about 
five to six years, let's just be honest. If, if you make it past three, you are above average, well above average. So when I think about this factor crap, does personality really matter in the, in the NFL? If I'm drafting you to change my franchise, do I care if you're an asshole? Do I care if you treat the media with disrespect? Do I care if you do this or do that? Yes, I do. Guys, this is a fact. Personality does matter, especially at the skilled positions. Quarterback, receiver, running back. The positions that get a lot of media coverage. Now, if you are a defensive lineman, if you are a linebacker, if you are a cornerback, if you're an offensive lineman, if you're a full, 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 full back, give me full-blown asshole. I love me some good asshole linebackers. But quarterbacks, hey, I need you to navigate the media. I need you to be able to say the right things. I need you to speak with confidence and punctuality and that kind of thing. Receivers, I need you to do the same thing. Also, off the field, I don't need no BS. I don't, I don't need you smacking a waitress's butt. I don't need you trying to pull out her Adam's apple. Like, I don't need none, none of that crap, Tyreek Hill. You know who I'm talking about. So, yes, personality does matter. It is a big fact, guys. So let me know in the comments below, fact or crap, does personality really matter when drafting said player into the NFL? Let's go ahead and jump back up into the chat here. Chat here, chat, chat, chat here. Bum, bum, bum. John says facts. Let me get that out there. My bad. He says facts. It is the facts. You like you have to draft a good personal person. The person has to be willing to communicate. The willing the person has to be willing to uh, you know be be a good person. Wayne G says big facts. Personality is more important than a 40 time. Well, let's not get that carried away, Wayne G. Let's not get too carried away. There are times if a person can run a 4 2 40 yard, yard, yard dash, and I can get them in the sixth, seventh round, and they're a complete asshole. I don't care. I can use I can use you and use you and abuse you for a few years, right? <laughs> Carson. Said, who the F let them be in charge? Haha, ha, personality matters, but ability will get you further. Huh. First of all, Carson, this is my show. I'm always in charge. <laughs> Secondly, he says, Pers personality matters, but ability will get you further. This, uh... Kind of takes me back to uh, actually a coaching issue that I just had just the other day. I have a very, very bad kid on my defense. Consistent, con consistently bad-mouthing parents, getting in trouble with, with like the teachers. In, he is in detention every other day, right? He's, he's, he's just a very, very bad kid, but he is an incredible athlete. He is an, an incredible athlete. Unfortunately, I had to make an example out of said person. Unfortunately, I had to dismiss this player from my team because I did not want that bad culture being okay on my team. Because when you have to deal with a bad person off the field, it takes away me preparing for a game. It takes away from me getting 40 other kids ready to be good people in society. Now, on the NFL standards, your ways are pretty much set, right? Your ways are who you are. You can try to change who you are, but at the end of the day, when, sh when you get punched in the mouth, you revert to your old ways. As they said many, many times in college, you can take the person out of the hood, but you cannot take the hood out of the person. Bill Snyder 101. With that being said, ability will get you further, but 
if the personality gets you in trouble, Henry Ruggs III, your ability means nothing to me. Right. John says, and a team player not being so selfish. Yeah. Sometimes I, I like me a good selfish player. Sometimes I like me a good selfish player. Sometimes I like a player that says, hey, give me the ball. C.D. Lamb, for example, went into Coach McCarty's office. They had Dak. They had Jerry Jones in there, whatever. And, saying, and like he said, hey, I can help you win you the game. Give me the ball. I don't care how you do it. Give me the ball. What did the Cowboys do? Very next, very, very, very next game, 15, 16 touches for C.D. Lamb. If C.D. Lamb wasn't being selfish, C.D. Lamb was like, Really wasn't being selfish. He was like, like he was just saying, like, "Hey, I can do this," uh, but give me a little bit of selfish act, like asshole player. Give me some Bill Romanowski. <laughs> Ryan Leaf and Jamarcus, Jamarcus Russell's ability was greater than their personality. Ryan Leaf's out uh, that spurt, that famous um, interview that he had when, like, he's like. I, I I don't even remember what was said, but he jumped up uh, jumped up in the reporter's face and saying rah, 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 whatever he said. Right? I I wish I had the uh, clip queued up where it actually had a producer that could like that could queue it up for me. This is a solo show. That was the beginning of the end of Ryan Leaf. Let's just let's just be honest. That was that was the beginning of the end of Ryan Leaf. Uh, John says like Russell Wilson rumor, he. Has it, has it, he is not. Like Russell Wilson rumor, has it, he is not. Not for sure what you're trying to say there, John. Sorry, 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 man. But let's move on to the next factor crap of the day, guys. Obviously, the Chicago Bears have the number one overall pick in this year's draft. Ryan Poole's addressed the media on Tuesday, and he said, and I quote, it's got to help our organization significantly referring to the number one overall pick and or trading out of that number one overall pick. He also went on to say he, he wants to do do right by Justin Fields and there is quote, no master plan with, with that being said, guys, is it fact or crap? Is Ryan Poole just telling people what they want to hear? Because, when we look at Ryan Poole's last season was his first year as a general manager for the Chicago Bears. They 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 ultimately did trade for the Carolina Panthers to get to to get DJ Moore and that uh, uh number 1 overall pick, right? Or sorry, they traded their 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 number 1 overall pick to Carolina for DJ Moore and a slew of picks, right? Ryan Poole's has been saying all the right things for a couple years now, right? Last season during the calm, I'm buying this same week. He says Justin Fields has a bright future and he is in it. This year, he says he wants to do right by Justin Fields, but there's no master plan. He also said we want to move quickly on Justin Fields, but we're not going to hurry the process. We heard about my opening rant about word soup. Ryan Pools is throwing spaghetti at a wall right now, and the media is going to stick something and run with it. Ryan Pools is telling people everything that they want to hear. This is 100% fact. Ryan Pools knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants to do, I should say. Ryan Pools knows that they want to draft a quarterback, knows if he wants to move on from Justin Fields, knows if he wants to trade out of that first overall pick since they do got the eighth overall pick coming up as lag as well. Ryan Pools, they have a master plan. Guys, this is a complete crap. Complete crap. I have never seen a person spew out so many words out of his mouth and literally say nothing. It's got to help our organization significantly. We got to do right by Justin Fields. We have no master plan. But we want to hurry through the process through Justin Fields, but we're not going to hurry up with it. What? What? 
mean, obviously Ryan Pools is not going to show his hand. He's going to have a poker face, right? He could have four four, four aces in his hand, but he is going to check, right? There are two different types of general managers in the combine, maybe three. First one being like Ryan, being like Ryan Pools, straight face, stone, stone face. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I have. I know what I would like to do, but I'm not going to give you any indication what I'm going to do. I'm going to check. I'm going to tap the table and check. GM owner number two, Jerry Jones, right? This guy is going to boast up his guy. He is going to go out on a limb and say, I want Marvin Harrison Jr. I want him in a Dallas Cowboys uniform. I am willing to trade up for him to do this, this, and this, and this. Jerry Jones says what he means. Now, does it always come to fruition? No. Luckily, he has Stephen Jones in there that, that is challenging his daddy. Like, say, hey, hey, dad, slow it down. <laughs> slow it down, baby. We know what we're doing. You can say what you want. Boost up your guy. But at the end of the day, you're just hurting us. Then you have the general manager, owner number three. The guy that wants to downplay his guy. Caleb Williams might be circled number one on the Chicago board's board 100%, but they're going to down, 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 downplay that guy. Ah, you know, his, his hand size is only a 10 and a quarter, and we were hoping it was going to be 10 and three three eights you know he, uh, he only measured in at 217 and needed him to be about 225 you know he, he I, i'm just not for sure if he's a fit here opening that window for teams to come up so obviously ryan pools is being the uh, number one guy but guys let me know do you think ryan pools has a master plan fact or crap does ryan pools have a master plan i'm gonna say fact he definitely has a master plan in place he knows what he's doing. He, he knows what he's trying to do, right? He knows if he wants to draft Caleb Williams. He knows if he wants to move on from Justin Fields. He's just giving us a little fluff. Wayne G says, polls won't show his hand. He wants to drive up the price for both Fields and the top pick at the same time. 100% facts. Why not try to get the best value out of said player, right? Uh, I believe... Many people, many experts, uh, I believe it was stockup.com or something to that effect. It it's gives you the trading values or the market value of said players. Said that Justin Fields is really only worth the third-round pick. I've heard people as high as offer second-round picks or willing to offer second-round second round, round picks for him. But many people, Brandon Combs, shout-out to him. He's moving up in the world. He's doing play-by-play -play for the Chicago Dogs now minor league baseball team up in Chicago. But uh, he said Justin Fields on any other team would probably win a Super Bowl on the Chargers, on the Falcons, on the Steelers. So when people like that are putting that out into the media and you hear that, obviously Steeler fans, Falcons fans, or Chargers fans are going to grab on to that. The fan pressure is a real is a real thing. The social media out, outsider is a real thing, right? When you have a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Atlanta Falcons, that is very, it's a very underachieving team. Teams that are a quarterback away or maybe this player away, maybe this player player away. And when that said player, Justin Fields, is linked to your team, of course, they're gonna be like, "Oh, just give him a first, just give him a first round pick." What is it gonna cost us, right? So yeah, I like, I get it, but I, I, that's 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 all that's, that's all I want to say on that right there. <laughs> Wayne G says, "Crappish." Hashtag waffle. He isn't for sure if he wants Fields or Williams. He won't know until he has all offers in his hand. So Wayne G is basically saying that if Pittsburgh Steelers come calling for Justin Fields and they offer a first round pick. Bada bing, bada boom. See you, Justin Fields. We're drafting Caleb Williams. Now, if it, now if a team like the Raiders come and give you three first round picks and 
maybe a Josh Jacobs or your first overall pick, uh, Justin Fields is it like is our guy. Do you guys really think that is a part of the plan? Do you think uh, uh, Ryan Poles really has like a two-way avenue? I think Ryan Poles wants to reset the rookie contract for their quarterback, and he wants to bring in his guy. I don't like as as long as any offer for Justin Fields comes in and like in general, I think that is a good offer. Whether it's a second round pick, whether it's a third round pick, what if it's a first round pick, right? Or what if it is a Josh Jacobs for Justin Fields? Well, what if it is a uh, a, a receiver, Devontae Adams, for a Justin Fields, right? I'm just throwing names out there. Obviously, I don't think that would ever happen. Um, Devontae Adams worth worth a hell of a lot more than, than Justin Fields. Or I could be uh, could be a hundred percent hundred percent wrong on that. Devontae Adams is kind of on the downside of his career. hasn't done hasn't done a whole lot. But speaking of the NFC North, head coach Kevin O'Connell says he thinks Kirk Cousins wants to be a Minnesota Viking for long term. And he said, and I quote, we will work to try to keep him here. So, guys, is it a fact or is it a crap that the Minnesota Vikings need to sign Kirk Cousins long term right now? Guys, Kirk Cousins is coming off an Achilles injury. He is, what, 34, 35 years old. Kirk Cousins has really never been that top 10 name, that top sexy name. However, Kirk Cousins does put up MVP numbers year after year after year. However, the Vikings currently hold the 11th overall pick in this year's 2024 draft. They do have eight total draft picks in this this year's draft. So is it going to be a fact or is it a crap that the Vikings need to sign Kirk Cousins long-term right now? That is a crap. That is a crap. You don't know what Kirk Cousins is going to bring you after his Achilles injury. Yes, I know he posted a video of him on an indoor tennis court throwing the ball. Dropping back, throwing the ball. Looked pretty good, right? But looking good and feeling good and playing good are three totally different things. Now, obviously, he was not on the Aaron Rodgers ganja trip to get back in like six weeks, right, from an Achilles injury. But Kirk Cousins is a player that we know if he is healthy, he will be a top 10 performing quarterback year after year at year after year. He were there as if healthy. So I think of this crap. I think the Vikings do not need to sign Kirk Cousins long term right now. You need to worry about getting your core in place there. A little bit of Daniil Hunter, maybe a little bit of JJ, right? Worry about getting those guys that are young core guys on your team established. So next year you can re you can restructure and if Kirk Cousins plays that play plays out of his mind, give him a three year deal. But on the flip side of that, guys, I've seen many many mock drafts and uh, the quarterback class is pretty deep. Matter of fact, the quarterback class feel is I feel is very very deep. Like I said, the Vikings have eight draft picks this season. At number eleven. Some mock drafts have them picking a quarterback, whether it be Bo Nix, Penix Jr., J.J. McCarty, somebody. I think they're going to go edge rusher. I think they're going to look to replace Daniil Hunter, let him walk, and worry about signing J.J. But with with that being said, there are going to be a lot of good day two, day three quarterbacks out there. And I'm looking at a guy that got injured for Florida State last season by the name of Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis was a very, very good quarterback for Florida State. Had them in the uh, pace to win a championship. He was in Heisman voting, right? Jordan Travis is a very, very good athlete. Much like Kenan Hooker suffered that ACL injury toward the end of the season. So if I am the Minnesota Vikings right now, this is what I do. I franchise tag Kirk Cousins. Whatever it is, $20 million, whatever. We, we will eat that Eat that money. Show me that Kirk Cousins, you are the Kirk Cousins that we've 
grown to love the last five, six, seven years of your career. On the flip side of that, I draft Jordan Travis day three. Let's say fifth, fourth, fifth, fifth, fifth round. I think Jordan Travis is a transcending quarterback. I think Jordan Travis can come in and change the Minnesota Vikings. Will it be next year? No. I think he needs a year to adjust, much like Hidden Hooker. Right? Let him sit the bench. Let him get fully healed and bada bing, bada boom. That is what you do. So, so guys, let me know in the comments, comments below. Fact or crap? Do the Vikings need to sign Kirk Cousins long term right now? Jim Powell's in the chat. What's up, Jimmy? Long time no see. He says every Chiefs fan is hoping Jones runs a 40 again so they can all get on them. Well, we all know what happened at Chris Jones' 40 yard dash, guys. He was running in his wanker. Fell out. It was a sight to see. Very proud of him that he has that ability to be running in spandex and his wanker falls out. Oh, I do not have that problem um, whatsoever. Wayne G says, fact. Fact that he wants to be there. Crap that they should give him a big guaranteed deal. Show me how bad you want to be here. How little will you take? So Wayne G thinks Kevin O'Connell and the general manager are, are, are kind of playing into uh, Kirk Cousins' ability or wishes to be a part of the Minnesota Vikings. Like, hey, if you want to throw to Justin Jefferson, if you want to throw to our rookie that they drafted last year's name, slipping my, slip my mind, if you want to compete in the NFC North, take a uh, three-year, $20 million deal. Take that cheap ass deal and put it in your pipe and smoke it, right? I don't know. Last factor crap of the day, guys, here. Last factor crap of the day. So here goes. So, so guys, be sure to play, play along. This is a live interactive show. Talk your shit down in the comments below, but be prepared to defend yourself because I will come at you. I am not ashamed at all. Now, the LA Chargers. The L.A. Chargers are a team that has a new head coach. They are in cap hell. Now, with the $30, $30 million cap expansion, they're not in terrible cap hell now, but they're still $50 million over the cap. Many people have been asking them about Justin Herbert. What are you going to do with Justin Herbert moving forward? Are you going to keep him? Are you going to trade him? Are you going to cut him? What are you going to do with Justin Herbert? Jim Harbaugh and the general manager of the Chargers have kind of just been hush about it. It's been a little hush hush. It's like it's like it's kind of like we'll uh, address that when that time comes. The Chargers do hold the fifth overall pick in this year's draft. So guys, fact or crap, should the LA Chargers move on from Justin Herbert? Now, last April, Justin Herbert did sign a 5-year, 226 million dollar deal this year if he were to get traded and or cut by the charger there's a 129 million dollar cap hit dead cap hit i should say they do have eight picks in the in the 2024 draft and justin herbert's stats have gone down every year since his rookie year for example he came into the league in 2020 he had a 66.6 percent completion percentage 4,300 yards, 31 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, 98.3 quarterback ranking, 2021. A little bit down on the percentage, completion percentage, 65.9. He did have a 5,000-yard season, 5,014 yards, 38 touchdowns to 15 interceptions with a 97.7 QBR ranking. A little bit higher yardage, a little bit higher touchdowns, a little bit higher interceptions. Now, 2022, 68% percentage, best of his career. 4,700 yards, 25 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, 93.2 QBR ranking. Last season, 65% completion for start, 3,000 yards passing, 20 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. Yes, he did not play the full season, but you get the gist. He's went boop, and now he's starting to go down decline. So, guys, factor crap. Should they move on from Justin Herbert? Guys, 
I've said it several times, and I'm going to double down on this said situation. The Chargers are in 100% rebuild mode. They are in rebuild mode. Look what they're doing. They are shopping all of their top talent. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Joey Bosa, Clea Mack. They are shopping their talent around. They want to get out of this cap hell. Jim Harbaugh wants to bring in his guys. Out with the old, old regime, old players, bring in my guys, bring in my players. Now, are they willing to take a $129 million dead cap pit to move on from Justin Herbert? I would say yes. I like Jim Harbaugh's track record. Everywhere he has gone, he has been a winner. He has won championships. He has led teams to Super Bowls. He has a winning percentage as a uh, winning percentage as a overall as a head 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 coach in college and in the NFL. I would trust the process if I were the Chargers. However, to take that $129 million dead cap hit has to be one heck of a trade. Has to be one heck of a trade. Couple first round picks, something. Actually, give me a first round pick and a slew of second, third, 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 and fourth, and then somehow I can manufacture those to get back up in the first round if I if I wanted to. With the Chargers being so financially strapped for money right now, meaning over the cap, cap, fifty million dollars over the cap, and a twenty and a hundred and twenty nine million dollar dead cap hit. I'm already shopping Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Joey Bosa, Clea Mack. Why not do a complete re, 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 rebuild? I think it's a fact. I think the Chargers should move on from Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert kind of gets the Kirk Cousins treatment. Look at his stats. Very, very good stats. Right around 70% on the completion percentage. Just just, just below it, year after year after year, with one of the worst head, head coaches and offensive coordinators of all time. Touchdowns to interception ratio, about 2-1 to one across the board. Not too shabby. QBR, right there about 90. Right? He's, he's a decent quarterback. Entertain the idea of him going to Atlanta. Entertain. Entertain the idea of him going to Pittsburgh. Entertain the idea of him going to New England. Entertain that idea. I think I think it, think it is a fact. I think they should move on from Justin Herbert. And that's just not me being a Chiefs fan. This is me being a Chargers realist and like saying, hey, you guys are not very good right now. You have all this talent on paper, but it is not coming to fruition. Year after year after year, you guys drop the ball and you suck. Maybe it is Justin Herbert. Maybe it was a coaching. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Let me know, guys, in the comments. Fact or crap? Should the Chargers move on from Justin Herbert? Da -da -da -da. Let's go ahead and jump into the chat here. Jim says Herbert is Pittsburgh bound, baby. Ooh. Listen, Justin Herbert to the Pittsburgh Steelers really makes a lot makes a lot of sense. He's a tough, big body quarterback that has a nice, strong arm with all that young talent around him. And he obviously he is young as well. With a players coach like Mike Tomlin, that might be just what they need. But the Pittsburgh Steelers are sitting right there in the mid draft there. If you are the Chargers, would you take the uh Steelers first round draft pick this year? Which like I think it's like 16 or 17, I think it is. Let's say a couple seconds and a third, and we'll give you some 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 Cam Hayward. Oh, well, seems seems like a deal to me. Wayne G says, "Crap, crap, mega crap." The only reason you'd ever cut him is to save money, and you can't go that for three seasons minimum. He's not going anywhere because they cannot move on. From him. You know, Wayne, isn't that the same thing that they said about old uh, Russell Wilson? Oh, the Broncos aren't going to take the $80 million cap hit, yada, yada, yada. It's like it's like 30, 30, 
$39 million this year and $40 million next year. So it's not something crazy like that. I think the Broncos are willing to move on from Russell Wilson with the $80 million cap hit. If you don't think he is your guy, move on from him now. Pull the bandaid off, right? Pull it off. I mean, I see what you're saying, but at the same, but at the same time, damn. Carson says, I think they are smart. They got Herbert's weapons and their picks and up their defense. If they are smart, they get Herbert weapons with their picks and up the defense. This is the problem, though, Carson. Justin Herbert has had weapons. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, Kellen Moore, the greatest offensive mind ever, right? Definitely air, definitely air, air, air quotes there. Now they have not been healthy. I think I saw a stat at one particular time. If, if I'm trying to refresh my memory correctly, that the big three, meaning Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and Justin Hab- Herbert, has only taken 10 percent of the snaps together as as a collective on the field, 10 percent of the time. But. If you up your weapons, let's say for whatever reason, what the Chargers are sitting at fifth overall pick right now. Let's just play devil's advocate and, and, and like, let's say Marvin Harrison Jr. drops to them at number five. The Arizona Cardinals pass him up. The Patriots pass him up. The Bears pass him up. The Chargers draft Marvin Harrison Jr. At that particular time, they've already traded Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to get underneath that cap. And they kept Clea Mack around uh, because he had a career year last year. Does Justin Herbert and Marvin Harrison Jr. move the needle for the Chargers? I don't think it does. I think the last few seasons since 2018, when the Kansas City Chiefs blew up on the offensive side of the ball, the Raiders, Broncos, and Chargers were trying to match fire with fire. They were they were they were trying to do the oh, we just gotta score as many points as like they and let's not worry about defense, right? Now all of a sudden the Chiefs are playing defense and teams can't keep up with them. I I understand you want to try to build your defense or whatever, basically keep keep the defense intact, but I don't I don't think one person or two people on the Chargers after cutting Mike Williams, McKean Allen, and, and, and Austin Eckler moves the needle. I think you have to do a complete rebuild. Get it, get it, get it, get everybody out of town. Wayne says, if they trade Herbert, they could afford 11 players this year. Iron Man football, baby. Hey. You can restructure some 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 deals, right? Carson says the problem with moving on from Herbert is you know he's better than your average quarterback. Who 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 knows what they get out of the draft? Correct. Nobody knows. Same thing with Justin Fields. You know who Justin Fields is. You know he is a good game managing quarterback that wants to stay in the and. In in the pocket and will and will run when needed. You don't know what Caleb Williams is going to be or uh, uh, Drake May or Jalen Daniels, right? You don't know, but risk and reward, right? Risk and reward. The Chargers are fifty million dollars over over the cap already. Trading Herbert, they'll be hundred hundred million dollars over the cap. You can't go into the season over the cap. You you actually can. It is like a $5 million fine per per every million you are over the cap. And if it's over is it over $60 million, you get a draft pick taken away. So technically you can. It's just it's, it's just a luxury tax. <laughs> New York Yankees did it for many, many years. But yeah, I I get what I get I get what you're saying. Jim Jim says, Wayne, the script doesn't care about cap space. That is why the Kansas City Chiefs got $50 million extra and nobody else did, right? Because it is all a part of the script. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, guys, that is going to be it for today's show. The Combine does officially start tomorrow on Thursday. I believe it's at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Linebackers and defensive linemen do take the field to showcase their skills. It will be aired on NFL Network. 
I will be there live for sure tomorrow. We'll do a studio show. Then bada bing, bada boom, right in the studio. I'll be heading up there to check it out. Hopefully get some interviews and just hang out with some guys and rub some elbows with the people. But guys, with, with, with that being said, if you haven't become a pigskin pundit already, click on the link to click link below. Become a pigskin pundit. We got an after show coming for you tomorrow on the road. Tomorrow we'll be talk, talking about that and some exclusive interviews coming from the combine as well. If you are a pigskin pundit. Tomorrow's show, we're going to dive deeper into the combine, and we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. What do they need to do to become a Super Bowl champion in 2025? But be kind, guys. ELE, everybody love everybody, but talk your shit, but do it. Do it. Do it kindly. See you tomorrow, guys. Have a great day.